Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing atrophy. Now, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. We're posting brand new educational content for those pursuing a career in medicine and your support on this account really helps us out. So with that being said, let's discuss atrophy by first discussing cellular adaptations, which is very important to have a good understanding of because this is going to lay a strong foundation for you as we go along this series of the basics of medicine and just general medicine. So you know what is going on and you understand the concepts we're talking about at a higher level. So let's talk about our cells. It's very important to understand that our cells are constantly under stress because of the environment that they are in. The micro environment is very stressful. And one example of this stressful environment is the stomach lining. Our stomach lining is very, very dangerous because there is something called hydrochloric acid, AKA stomach acid that is constantly eroding the stomach lining. So what's going on? Our cells have developed adaptations in order to survive in that stressful and dangerous environment. Now that's at the cellular level. When we're talking at the macro level, our organs, however, are generally in a state of homeostasis and they're able to adapt to different types of stressors by changing their organ function and their structure and the change that happens is going to occur based off of the type and severity of the stress placed upon the said organ and this is eventually going to lead to a growth of an organ happening via two main growth adaptations which we've discussed in a previous video those two main growth adaptations are hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Now that is a way for our cell and our organs to grow in size overall, specifically by growing in the number of cells and growing in the size of cells. But overall, our organ is going to grow in size, especially during the time that our organ or our tissue is under a stressful uh, period. Now, what happens if we take away the stress? What is going to happen to the size? Is the organ or does the tissue need to stay uh, really big? Does it need to stay large? Does it need to stay in this hypertrophy or hyperplastic state in order to adapt to nothing? No, it's going to go backwards. It's going to essentially undo everything that's happening. And that's going to be by a mechanism called atrophy. And that is why we say this is very important. This is why atrophy is the reason why we say that our organs are under a state of homeostasis because when stress is being placed upon an organ they're going to undergo hypertrophy and hyperplasia and when you take the stress away you have atrophy as the main mechanism to return to a normal state. So let's talk about atrophy. Atrophy is a general process in which we have reabsorption or we have the breakdown of tissue and that's going to involve apoptosis aka programmed I'm just going to tell you this now, programmed cell death. And we'll talk about that more as uh, in this lecture later on. Now, a decrease in stress of an organ is essentially the main factor that's going to lead to atrophy. And this is going to happen because of a lack of need of that organ growth from occurring. There's no more stress, aka there's no need for hyperplasia or hypertrophy to exist. And we're going to undo all of that by undergoing a process called atrophy. So there are actually two main processes within the sphere of atrophy that you should be aware of. And it's very simple. Remember, I have said that medicine is very straightforward and intuitive for the most part. So think about it that way. The two main uh, processes of atrophy are going to be decreasing the size of the cells, which is essentially the opposite of hypertrophy and decreasing the number of cells, which is the opposite of hyperplasia. Now, yes, we probably should have two different terms, but for your sake of understanding, just remember atrophy is going to undergo both uh, processes uh, in order to maintain homeostasis to reduce the size and the number of cells of an organ. So what is the exact mechanism that you should be aware of? Let's first talk about the decrease in the size of cells, AKA the opposite of hypertrophy. So this is essentially going to happen via the ubiquitin 
proteasome degradation pathway and autophagy, okay? So ubiquitin is going to bind to the intermediate filaments of the cytoskeleton. And proteasomes in the cytoskeleton are actually going to recognize the ubiquitin bind uh, cytoskeleton and it's going to end up destroying the cytoskeleton. So if you get rid of the cytoskeleton of the cell, there is no reason for the cell to exist. And when that happens, we have cells like, we have, excuse me, organ like lysosomes, which are going to induce organelle autophagy, and that is going to lead to the destruction of the cell, and it's going to decrease in the size of the cell. That makes a lot of sense because you need to remember back to our previous lecture when we're talking about hypertrophy in involving activations of genes. So this is gene activation. It's a process that involves gene activation. And what happens when you activate genes? You are going to induce or increase organelles, okay, and proteins. So in order to undo all of that, you are going to tag these organelles with ubiquitin. And when ubiquitin is tagged, you're going to get proteasomes, which are going to come in and destroy these organelles and allow our cell to return to a state of homeostasis. Now, when, what about when we're talking about hyperplasia and reducing or undoing the uh, effects of hyperplasia? Well, there's essentially one way we can do that, and that's going to be via apoptosis. Because remember, hyperplasia involves an increase in the number of cells. And there's no way to get rid of the number of cells other than just destroying the cell and going through apoptosis. So that is one way, that, that is the other way we actually uh, manage hypertrophy and hyperplasia. We manage growth adaptations at the molecular level. This, this slide, the one I just talked about right here, these two mechanisms, okay, apoptosis and the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway are very important. You will be tested on this at one point, so do not forget this content it is very important for your learning. So that is atrophy. Now there is a mechanism that's related to atrophy, which I didn't want to make its own video about, but I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of and you've been exposed to it. So I have done my due diligence and that mechanism or those mechanisms are aplasia and hypoplasia. Okay. So aplasia is a birth defect where an organ or a tissue is wholly or completely absent. It's no longer or is never formed at uh, the developmental stage. Okay. This occurs due to a failure of cells developing during embryogenesis. Okay. So the cells in themselves are really not developing. So an example of this would be renal agenesis. So renal agenesis can be both bilateral or unilateral, but in renal agenesis, you are not going to have one or more or both kidneys, okay? Essentially, they just never formed. Now compare that to hypoplasia and you'll realize the two mechanisms are related, but they're not the same. In hypoplasia, you're going to have underdevelopment or incomplete development of a tissue or an organ, right? Hypo meaning less, right? Hypoplasia, plasia meaning development. Well, A means none. So aplasia would be no development, hypoplasia, underdevelopment. So this occurs because of a decrease in cellular production during embryogenesis. It's not because the cells never formed, it's because you just didn't have enough cells forming during embryogenesis in order for the tissue or organ to develop completely. Now often it'll lead to a malfunctioning or a small organ. The function might be there but it won't be completely uh, the same. An example of this would be thymus hypoplasia in DeGeorge syndrome. In DeGeorge syndrome you'll know that kids don't have that thymic shadow really early on on an x-ray and the reason why is that their thymus doesn't form completely. Now in an adult having thymus hypoplasia is a normal process because your thymus involutes as you grow. But in a child with DeGeorge syndrome, you're going to notice the thymus, the thymic shadow not really being present. And the reason why is that those tissues did not get produced completely. You had decreased cellular production of those tissues during embryogenesis. And that's what differentiates aplasia with hypoplasia. So in this lecture, we talked about atrophy. Atrophy is essentially undoing everything from hyperplasia and, and uh, um, uh, hypertrophy. And it does that by going through the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway to destroy the extra organelles and uh, proteins in the cytoskeleton. 
and it goes through apoptosis to just get rid of the cells in general. And in the aplasia pathway, you have just no development of the tissue. And finally, in hypoplasia, you have underdevelopment of the tissues. All of these concepts are very important for you to know, and all of them will get tested on. But I've made them short and sweet for your understanding. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. We're going to be posting brand new content every single day to help you get through your exams and to help you learn more about medicine for free. Thank you so much, and we'll see you back here in the next lecture.